how do I get started with AI? Look, the answer to this is really simple. You get started with AI by getting started with AI. And there are some choices. We're going to run through those today. Just give you a heads up and a real eye-opening look at what AI is, how it might be able to help you, and how you can get started. Hey, I'm Colin Scotland. Welcome to the Thrive and Serve podcast, where we focus on being our truest, most authentic expression of self and then leveraging technology to help amplify us and our impact in the world in service of others. So AI, what is this thing everybody now has heard of this tsunami wave of change that is impacting on the entire universe, the known world as we understand it today? It's a technology that essentially is helping us to think better, to be better, to automate tasks. The world of commerce loves AI because it allows you to do anything and everything better, faster, cheaper. And it allows cost efficiencies and savings that just weren't there before. So from a pure profit perspective, AI allows the elimination of unnecessary expenses and therefore the maximization of profit. That's the draw. That's what's causing a big furore around the investment in AI, just like in the dot-com boom back in the day when the internet became a thing. This is bigger than the internet. This is bigger than Google. This is bigger than all of those developments that we've seen over the last 20, 30, 40 years. This is the biggest thing to hit humanity. And so this big thing that's going to hit is going to have a number of impactful changes that happen to you, to me, to the world around us, and to the way that we work, the way that we operate, the way that we live our daily lives is going to be in constant flux and change now as we move forward into this AI era. So you, from a business perspective, you really need to look at this tool sooner rather than later. The thing that's really captivated everybody's attention is something called Gen AI or Generative AI. And this is the ability for a computer to generate content that sounds like a human, to essentially begin to create this interface with machines that we never had before. And it's the culmination of a number of different technologies that essentially has allowed this production of generative AI. So we can say, hey, like we would with a colleague or a friend or a mentor, hey, help me come up with some ideas for this podcast. Help me write this email. Help me create these blog posts. Help me get some clients. Help me understand my clients. And all of those different applications are now possible with the machine because we can talk with the machine either by typing into the text-based interface or we can talk to the machine vocally. We can have a voice conversation with the AI to do exactly this, to begin a dialogue, an exchange, an interaction that allows us to get generated content out of the machine, out of AI. This is what's blowing people's minds right now is the idea that we can generate brand new ideas and content without any or minimal input from us. So this excitement comes with a double-edged sword of both potential losses of employment, of uncertainty of how the world is going to change, and on the flip side, the optimism and the hope of, wow, I can be so much more efficient. I can get my message out to more people. I can impact more people. I can do more. I can be better. I can go faster. And I can leverage this technology to amplify my impact. And both of those sides need to be taken into account in this. But ultimately, this is, or this is why I have this stance that AI must always be human first, both in principle and in application, in the way that we use the technology. So how do we get started with AI? As I mentioned in the intro, we get started by getting started. And the way that I would encourage you to do this is to pick a tool, and I'll share the main ones with you right now. Pick a tool or more to go and have a little experiment and exploration inside of the tool to just to see what's possible. And I'm going to encourage you to think into the tool. Think into the tool. What does that mean, Colin? It means that you go into a tool like ChatGPT and you think into the tools. Hey, how might I use this as a leadership coach to help my clients more? 
So you would literally type those words into the AI. How might I use this as a leadership coach to help my clients more? What things am I not thinking about around AI? What are my getting started steps? So thinking into the AI will give you those very first interactions of what it is, how it might work, how it might help. And it will begin to lead you on that exploration path of getting started with the tool and opening your aperture of some of the possibilities because the possibilities, believe me, are infinite, literally infinite. I've been working with AI exclusively since November, 2022. We're now, as we sit here in March, 2025, and I am constantly blown away by possibilities every single day, new possibilities, new doors opening, new exciting developments in this field. It is moving so fast, so fast. So this is why my encouragement and my passion, my urge to you is to just jump on this train now before it speeds away and you'll struggle to catch up. So getting in, thinking into the tool. Yes, you can go into things like prompt engineering, how we actually type those words into the AI, because that makes a world of difference, a world of difference. How we construct the way that we use it as a thinking tool, how we customize the AI to us so that it knows us and it speaks like us and it resonates with us on a soul, ba a soul deep level. These are all things that you can do and learn right now, getting started, get started, get into the tool and start thinking in to the tool. So which tool should I get started with? Right now, there are a number of, of, of possibilities. We have arguably the de facto standard is OpenAI's chat GPT. They've just dropped version 4.5, the latest version of their model to paid users right now. And it is just phenomenal. It is amazing. It is like having a conversation with another human being, a very intelligent human being. And more than that, actually, because it's a very intelligent human being, all of the AIs that have been trained on the corpus of information of all of humanity throughout all of the ages, and they can morph and change into exactly what and who you need them to be. So I need some therapy right now. They can be the therapist. I need some business advice now. They can be the business advisor. I need some legal help. I need some technical help. I need some advice on X. They can be all of these things for you. So ChatGPT is the first recommended option. Then we have chat. Let me li list them out to you. We have ChatGPT by OpenAI. We have Anthropic's Claude, which is one of my personal favorites. We have Google's Gemini. We have Elon Musk's Grok 3, which is a recent one that's just come out. We have also the Chinese model DeepSeek. And DeepSeek is another one that just rattled the whole AI world when it came out because it jumped to the top of the leaderboards and overtook all of Western developers' technologies in a heartbeat. It was crazy times. And we all, there's also a really cool one called Perplexity. And perplexity is good because it is search-based AI. So it links up to the AI tools, but it's predominantly search-based. You can search in Grok, in Gemini, and in ChatGPT. Search the internet, essentially, and have the AI interrogate and interpret what you're searching on the internet. You can't do that yet in Claude. Uh, Claude is my personal favorite for creating words, content, messaging. I'm a marketer. so. To a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so Claude is the perfect nail to me for marketing stuff, for ideal client profiling, for messaging, branding, copywriting, all of that good stuff. I find Claude to be amazing. Alongside ChatGPT as well. They're my go-to two tools. So out of those, there is no right or wrong. There are privacy considerations. So let me mention that very quickly. Be aware when you're typing and thinking into the AI that you are giving your data across along on the internet. You want to be mindful of what you put in. Don't just throw all personal details into here, right? If you're using it for coaching, it's a consideration. Privacy and ethics is a huge thing, a big area that you need to be mindful of how you're using this tool. Once you're past that initial fear and skepticism around AI as a thing, oh, the robots are going to take over the world. 
and you're in a place where you can accept that this sea change is coming and now I want to get on the train and I want to play with this thing for myself, then still be mindful of privacy ethics. So every time you type into the AI, you're giving your information across over the internet. Now, there are ways that you can opt out of what's called training the model. So every time you type something into AI, every time you interact with AI, the data is used to train the AI to make it better. You can opt out of this with most of the models. You can opt out of this with Grok. You can opt out of this with Gemini. You can opt out of this with Claude. And you can opt out of it with ChatGPT. At the moment, you can't opt out with DeepSeek. I've not found a way to do that. It may have changed by the time you're listening to this. But those other models are arguably safer from a data perspective because they are allowing you to take and remove your data from the training. That's a consideration, okay? And, and don't let that stop you going and playing, but that might be a consideration in terms of what model you use. Now, if you go and play with Perplexity has their own US-based version of DeepSeek that you can interrogate inside of Perplexity, that's what's giving them a bit of an edge because they use Claude's model in there. They use the DeepSeek model and one of their own, I think, as well. So the considerations. Once you've got the, a model that you want to go play with, create an account and start to think into the model, think into the AI to get some ideas around how you might use this thing, what it might look like for you, and areas that you could focus on. And then you are on the train. You are now making those steps. Give yourself, like anything, I want to go learn tennis. I want to be a great tennis player. How many times a week are you going to tennis, Colin? Oh, I'm not going at all. So <laughs> I'm never going to be a great tennis player if I don't go and play tennis. So I have to go, I have to book sessions, I have to go and see an instructor. And that it has to be a dedicated practice. So my encouragement to you here is to dedicate some practice time. Dedicate time in your week to experiment and explore with AI. Give yourself a couple of Pomodoro timer. I live my life by these 25 minutes time focused on a task and then five minutes break and then repeat. So give yourself a Pomodoro of time to go and explore with the AI and just get into the tool. And then as you begin the journey, then you can start, oh, prompt engineering. What is that? How can I instruct it better? How can I make it sound like me? How can I use it for this? I could use it for that. And just by thinking into the tool, setting up account, think, thinking into the tool, you, your eyes will be opened and you will literally, like me, be fishing around the floor for the top of your head because you will be mind blown. I promise you, you will be mind blown with the possibilities. So get started. Be mindful of privacy and ethics and go think into the AI of choice just to see how, where, and what some of those possibilities could be for you. Have fun. Hey, I'm Colin Scotland. This is the Thrive and Serve podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please comment, subscribe, and share this with someone who needs to hear it. And look, go let your light shine in the world in the way that only you can. There's only one of you. So go make it count. Let's leverage AI to amplify what we do as humans, how we show up in service of others. And I'll see you next time.